Endgame is evolving for the better, and if you want a chance in taking on the best and worst bosses in Grandmaster Difficulty, you're going to want to be prepared for it. With today's build focusing on the Hunter's Air on Swift Gauntlets, I'm going to give you the best endgame void build that will make your life incredibly easier when taking on such content, and even give the blueprint needed for next season so forth. Double Heavy, Fast Super Regen, Incredible Survivability are all tied into this one simple build. But if you want more stuff like this in the future, then why not leave a like, a sub, and turn on your notifications for more content like this in the future, I would really appreciate it. With that out of the way, the subclass we'll be using is the Mobius Quiver Super, which is newly updated and fantastic against ads and bosses or mini bosses alike. For the sake of simplicity and not making things complicated, I'm going to provide you with my recommendations of aspects of fragments that I find useful for endgame in general. For aspects, we have the Trapper's Ambush, which will allow us to go invisible via a dive attack and also weaken anyone caught within the smoke. Useful if you want a quick dodge if things get bad, or if you need to weaken a powerful combatant before they get close. We then have Vanishing Step, which will allow you to go invisible via your dodge. For fragments, we have Echo Remnants, which increases grenade duration for longer. Echo of Undermining, where grenades debuff combatants. And Echo of Explosion, where voidability kills will cause targets to explode. Although, this can be swapped out for Echo Obscurity, where finishers will grant you invisibility. The gist here is to use our abilities and invisibility like normal to create plenty of opportunity to take out groups of combatants in one full go, or use it to get a better angle on them. This will help hunters stay alive much longer compared to the other classes, and we can use our abilities to fall back safely, or use it to revive others, get finishers, collect ammo, etc. And the finisher part is very important as that leads back to the exotics being used. In terms of stats, the key for survival here is just to go with the bare minimum as cooldown will be pretty high via mods and team support. We have mobility at 60, discipline at 90, and intellect at 60, and these will be the key points for allowing you to survive as long as possible. Discipline being the highest is to make full use of the debuff that the grenades will grant us, and thus allow us to melt through bosses or mini bosses health a bit faster. To support all these stats, I have found a wisdom which gives us a plus 15 intellect points and faster cooldown, elemental ordnance for producing wells via grenades, battleful well for producing two wells instead of one, well of tenacity for the extra protection via wells collected for a few seconds, and reaping well maker which will allow us to create wells upon doing a dodge and getting killed straight after. As you can see, I'm linking everything back into the key stats being used so they don't feel like they're going to waste. We can change a number of these mods for more safety or firepower if we wish, but this is only needed if you feel the pros outweigh the cons. For those that don't have the mods, it's best you always focus on the main two stats you're going to be using non-stop, such as going invisible and discipline. Getting these stats as high as possible and then filling in the rest with whatever mods you have will give you the best and most safest results possible. For weaponry, you're going to want to have weapons that are easily viable for any and all content in mind you play. For primary, I have the Arbalest Linear Fusion, which is a fantastic fusion to have at all times for stripping shields of our combatants. On top of that, the Linear has a high precision damage multiplier, which is great for saving heavy ammo against champions, and it also has the Disruption Break perk, which increases the kinetic damage for a few seconds after breaking said shield, so very handy in team play. Now, do make sure you have plenty of ammo finder mods available for this weapon, so that it never runs out when you need it the most. For secondary, we have the Insidious Pulse with Adaptive Munitions and Firefly, and although the weapon's stats aren't the best, the perk pick and potential rolls are what makes the weapon enticing to try and grind out for and get a full weapon print for. Now, I chose this specific role as Firefly is great for crowd control, which everyone can agree on, and Adaptive Munitions, on the other hand, is a perk that doesn't get enough recognition by the player base, but is incredibly useful for all content. Your perk will adjust your damage against other elemental shields the more hits you land on them until you're able to destroy a solar or void shield within 2-3 to three shots. It's incredibly potent in Grandmaster against match shield combatants as a must have if you don't want to keep relying on using your arbalist or any other weapon all the time. Now I know that not everyone has done the raid as of yet, so instead you can try and get the pointed inquiry scout rifle which can roll with a similar perk. On top of that, the weapon has the Psycho Hack Origin trait, which will reduce combatants' outgoing damage, so it has some potential of being even more better than Insidious. This just depends on which one you prefer the most. Now, for Heavy, I have the Red Heron Rocket Launcher with Field Prep and Frenzy, and although I could use something else like the Palomaya B with Last Impression, I don't think there really is a personal choice in terms of what you want to use, 
as anything can fit the bill here. Plus, the following two lockers can be crafted with any random roll of your choice, so you don't need to go with what I have here. Your choice is down to you. For stats, we have already mentioned how mobility, discipline, and intellect are the three main stats you need to focus on to make sure the build goes as planned. With the main mods already covered and how they play a role in the build, let's go with the additional mods that will be providing support as well. For intellect, we have the Harmonic Cypher mod, which will allow us to create orbs of power via rapid final blows or magic element weapons. This can be swapped out for the Kinetic Cypher mod instead, which is the same but for Kinetic weapons only. We then have Power Preservation, where our super final blows will grant us more orbs after being used. For mobility, we have the Utility Finisher mod, which will grant us class ability energy of your finishers, so non stop dodge on demand. And Discipline really only has the Elemental Well mods such as Battle for Well to aid us in getting ability energy back quickly. That, to be honest, is all you really need in terms of supporting the additional mods and stats in place. Where Aeon Swift Gauntlets come in place now is against Luke and the Hive and Champions, and this is where the build will shine the most. Thanks to the Exotic, we will be able to produce heavy or special ammo on demand against powerful combatants as long as we get a finisher on them. This is where the utility mod will come in handy as we'll most likely use our dodge to close a gap and then use our dodge again to escape. But did you know that combining the exotic with Luke and Hive mod will also allow you to drop two heavy bricks instead of the one? From testing and seeing reports from others, you can produce a ton of heavy for everyone as long as you finish off a champion or Luke and Hive from start to finish, and this will help in clearing up rooms very quickly. Although I have noticed this has been finicky at times and it doesn't always work. But when it does, you can fire away 2 or 3 rockets each time and stock back up to full again with literally no downsides. It's also important you have the Rocket Launcher Scavenger mod and Linear Fusion Scavenger mod so that they never run out of the 2 until you reach the main boss arena. Remember, if you're running with a new Might LFG group, sometimes they won't allow you to get the finisher that's rightfully yours. It's always important to have these 2 other mods available just in case. Now with everything covered, here's what it looks like compiled into 1. For Head, we have Minor Intellect, Power Preservation, Harmonic Siphon, and Fondle Wisdom mod. Arm, we have Discipline, Fastball, Elemental Ordnance, and Sector of Insight mod. Chest, we have Discipline, because of Dampner Times 2, and Battle for Well mod. Leg, we have Discipline, Rocket Launcher Scavenger, Linear Fusion Scavenger, and Weather Tenacity mod. Cloak, we have Minor Discipline, Lucent Finisher, Utility Finisher, and Weeping Wallmaker mod. Now, many of you may have already heard about the unique ability to get double rockets on demand, and this is one of those examples showing you how useful such a setup can be for any endgame content in mind. As you're already aware, the Grandmaster for the season aren't outright the best rotation we've had for a while, but they aren't impossible to do. Lightblade, Birthplace of Vial, Glassway, etc. are some of the toughest nightfalls to do this every season, and does require a team to have a hunter on standby for certain areas to progress through. But like I said, they are not impossible to do, and with a good team, nothing is impossible. So I've created the following build that will cover everything a player like yourself will need, so that you can continuously support your team from start to finish. Heavy ammo on demand, constant invisibility, ultra fast super regen, being able to take out shield quickly, and creating worlds for quick enhancements are all in the build, waiting for you to pick it up and use how you see fit. And I quite honestly like this build as it leans heavily into the everyone benefits from this setup scenario. Now the Hunter Stasis and Void Supers are great for ad clearing, and they're also great with going invisible to help out others when the time comes. But this shouldn't be the only thing they are reliable for. Having a loadout like this helps a bunch as they can provide debuffs or even more firepower when it's needed, and from there it makes even the most veteran endgame player life a whole lot easier. I can see this being useful for very new endgame players, you want to see how Grandmasters or any Master tier content goes, and this doesn't stop at just Grandmaster, this covers all content in game, so you'll have a build that can cover even the newest and latest fad introduced. It's up there with the rest of the endgame Hunter builds available and what we're all aware of, but I believe this is the peak of Hunter endgame builds that you'll want to take note on as the survivability and general support is enough to make any Grandmaster easier for the general player base in mind. And that should be the golden rule for any new or veteran player going into endgame content. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you do that type of stuff, link is always down below. Once again, thanks for stopping by, I'll see you in the next one.